Hello, uh, my name is Jonathan Clark uh, from uh, PolyHP, and it's my pleasure to be uh, here today talking to you about um, uh, smarter working in the smarter modern workplace um, from a PolyHP perspective. So uh, I know there's lots of uh, good content from other presenters, uh, but we just wanted to give you some uh, insights and information um, from a Poly perspective on how we see uh, this panning out in the, uh, uh, in the public sector environment. Um, uh, but first and foremost, I just wanted to give a bit of an overview of um, who PolyHP are for those that uh, don't know. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, there are two, two iconic companies coming together now with, uh, with HP, which you're hopefully familiar with on the right hand side. Um, started in 1940, making oscillators uh, for, the, uh, uh, for, for, for the Walt Disney Corporation. So any, 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 any people out there who recognize that Fantasia can see that uh, the technology was uh, uh, used in that. And from a poly perspective, um, uh, 1969, we were formed in 1961 um, to help with, uh, with NASA and their, uh, their moon landing and Apollo missions uh, to provide that clear, concise communication. Um, so, uh, yeah, two iconic brands coming together, um, each playing um, their part in, in, I guess, in modern work these days. So from a, from a, from a poly HP perspective, you know, HP strengths for compute, uh, print, displays and peripherals. Uh, uh, combined with their uh, security and manageability and services of those devices. From a poly perspective, as we drive that um, hybrid and modern working and smarter working agenda, um, it's all about how we can improve um, the audio and video experience, leveraging the HP, poly com uh, HP uh, compute for laptops, but also taking some of that ten technology into room systems as well, uh, combined with desk phones, video and room solutions and helping organizations and people uh, work and communicate in, in however they want to do that. Uh, and then, of course, from an IT perspective, uh, we, we, um, we offer the management, whether that's devices and insights and room services uh, across the whole plethora of solutions that we do. So, uh, so just to give you a flavour of that, and uh, from a poly perspective, uh, we just do uh, focusing on that primarily. Um, we 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 help uh, your users um, in 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 how they want to work in the office, working remotely, um, and how they want to communicate. And uh, and we leverage that working with over sixty ecosystem partners. Obviously, the the key players are probably Microsoft, uh, seeing a bit of Zoom, um, but um, uh, you know in terms of communicating how we can help you with those multiples of platforms that you may have in your environment um, we can we can add headsets uh, to improve that audio experience from personal devices we can provide telephony devices but we also then add video for that communication space and also traditional audio conferencing uh, and then we wrap the software and services around those uh, uh, solutions and uh, part of our portfolio so the messaging is is, is understanding you know um, how we can help your users. Um, and it's not just about the, the technology itself. It's a bit of science and a bit of research that we provide to uh, help uh, and understand how your users want to work in this, this modern working environment. Oops, I'm click, click the right uh, button and we'll move forward rather than backwards. Um, uh, and obviously we work with uh, a lot of corporate organizations as well as the public sector. So you can see some of the larger brands out there uh, who use uh, Poly as a trusted a communication platform uh, leveraging uh, those base um, platforms such as Zoom and Teams and Ring Central uh, and all those pro providers that we have out there that are in the portfolio. Um, but I think the thing is, is making sure that people are comfortable uh, and providing them solutions uh, for how they want to work and wherever they want to work. So it doesn't matter whether you're joining and working remotely um, or you're actually going into the office now as you're driving that to return to office um, to make people um, as productive uh, no matter where they're working from and creating uh, what we call equity between those that are in the room and those who aren't. So we, we have solutions uh, across our whole portfolio uh, that can certainly assist um, uh, as we drive that, whether that is room systems or personal devices to improve that video and audio experience. Uh, and obviously we've seen of uh, pre-pandemic uh, that that migration to the cloud was uh, something that was 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 happening and obviously uh, during the pandemic that really did um, uh, take the next level into that cloud uh, communication platform uh, and obviously Microsoft is leading the way uh, and I know you a lot of you users out there have that in multiple tenants um, which can have some issues and challenges uh, which we'll come on to in a second 
Um, but it's all about uh, that Microsoft uh, number one for online meetings, one number one in cloud calling. Um, but obviously, Zoom's following close behind in terms of the uh, the online meetings and obviously cloud calling, and also uh, some of the other providers, Ring Central, that we're uh, uh, that are uh, attending this event as well. So we're seeing year on year growth, um, <clears throat> but it's how we can make sure that um, uh, that improvement uh, is across all your devices and that native experience, or whatever choice of, of platform you're using, that you can use a soft client on your personal device at home on your laptop or PC. Um, uh, then you went, when you walk into a meeting room, you're confronted with something that looks very, very similar. So how can we improve that experience either with a native controller or bringing your own device and plugging that into some environments as well um, to uh, improve that experience? And, um, and obviously, as we're driving that return to work, we can see here that 79% um, uh, of workers expect employers that, uh, to provide that equipment uh, across all their working locations, um, whether that be room systems, whether that be personal devices such as headsets uh, uh, or, or, or additional cameras, um, to give you, make sure that it's a crisp, clear video image because it's all about portraying that uh, right experience so it doesn't matter where you're working from. Uh, and again, that portability of these devices, you know, uh, users are saying that they're happy to, um, to to carry those devices around with them, whether that is a mouse or a headset, um, to enable them to work in, in that best environment, however they, they want to do from a from that perspective. Um, so it's all about, you know, making sure that people are comfortable in those environments um, and providing that outstanding experience uh, for all those participants. As I say, whether it's that personal camera that I'm using here or whether I'm in a meeting room, you would expect that sort of technology to um, to, to be there um, uh, and, and that audio experience to be there as well. But as hands off as uh, uh, hands off experience as, as possible, you know people are comfortable with uh, their settings on their devices. They can they can blur their backgrounds. They can put um, uh, different images on their backgrounds. So they're quite comfortable in those applications that they're using. Uh, what you don't want to be uh, faced with when you walk into a meeting room is something that looks alien to you. So making sure you have that native experience wherever possible, or as I say, that bring your own device experience as well. So you can use your laptop, have the comfort of being able to use that, but then using uh, additional cameras and microphones and speakers in those rooms. So giving you a, 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 a journey to go on, um, you know, uh, or uh, using your bring your own device with some devices or actually uh, using uh, um, uh, dedicated room systems. And again, we have uh, solutions to uh, help there. But it's all about making sure that uh, people have that equitable experience across the whole uh, platforms. So from a poly perspective or a poly HP perspective, it's all about people. Uh, and that's what we're going to focus on because the pe people are the most important uh, uh, um, things in, in, in all organizations. It's how can we equip those people with that right technology and also equip those spaces with the right technology and make sure that they're fit for purpose in whatever that role is that they need to do, whether that is a, 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 a team meeting, uh, you need uh, some rooms of a certain size uh, to, to accommodate uh, the people that return to the office or maybe some focus spaces where people want a bit of privacy but they want to have that uh, ability to have um, a higher quality video experience um, uh, other than those that are in the laptop. Now, obviously, laptops and HP make very good cameras, um, but it's all about making sure that it, uh, you're getting eye line contact uh, when you're having that discussion. So uh, placing it so that you're comfortable seated, uh, if it's a personal space um, uh, or in a meeting room, um, have that camera so you can get eye contact with people at the far end because that hybrid working is all about eye contact and making it immersive as possible. But simple to use, I think, is the key thing. And, uh, and obviously, they were familiar with some of those challenges. Um, so in terms of how people want to do and our focus on people, um, you know, everybody is different. Everybody wants their own different wearing style or working style. Uh, and, you know, we don't we, we like to give you the opportunities, IT folks that we're talking to, uh, to HR people that we may be talking to, having that conversation with how you can equip your your staff with the right equipment to make them feel valued, uh, be giving them some choice in those devices. So you can see here a range of people with different types of headset on based on that personal preference, but all will be around high quality audio, lots of noise cancelling capability, both for non-transmitting that into the call. So if you're in a noisy environment, you have a microphone that cancels out that noise, uh, but also in that environment, for me, I've got some ear, ear pads on here that will cancel that noise for me uh, and, and stop 
uh, and, and allowing me to focus on the call if I'm in a noisy environment, whether that's out and about, whether that's a home and there's lots of children around, or whether that's in an open plan office where there's lots of noise. So, um, you know, how you can Im improve that experience, giving people a different choice of wearing style. So it's, it's all about understanding people and how they want to work. So we've done a lot of research over the years um, uh, for the last uh, 10 to 12 years now in terms of uh, understanding the different types of work styles in organizations. Uh, and and uh, this is available to you as well. If it's some research that you want to take part in, we have got links and uh, please feel free to talk to uh, some of the guys in the booth after the session. Um, but it's it's just um, it's understanding how some some people work within that organization. What is their preferences? What is their job role and their function? So we've we've identified the six types of different um, uh, office work styles within that organization. Obviously, some primarily office based, some flexible uh, and then uh, some more remote based with uh, some time in the office and they all have different requirements and different uh, connectivity requirements and use cases so you can see on the left hand side the office communicator as an example headset usage 33 percent of the time video usage five percent of the time so mainly audio uh, discussions but do a lot of communication requirement for a desk phone lots of emails and and when they are in the office they do that in-person communication whereas at the other end of the spectrum you have the road warrior or the connected executive that are always out and about uh, always on uh, always on different types of calls or using video um, uh, as it's now per pervasive to get that contact being the leaders in those types of meetings so you can see they've got different requirements and this is how we can help give your um, your your um, uh, your users uh, a little bit of a choice in the types of devices that they need to use what things they need to connect to whether that is a soft client whether on a, on a laptop um, whether that is a mobile device, so a mobile phone, or whether that's a desk phone. So understanding what those requirements are will lead to uh, the different devices to help understand how they want to work um, so that we can provide the right devices for those right types of use cases. Because what this work style and persona research has found is that one device uh, and one size doesn't, does not fit all. So, uh, And this can be used to help in planning that work, re re return to office, if that is, uh, is, is, is where you are in that um, um, uh, development. Um, <clears throat> and your policy about working from home versus being in the office, is that three days a week? Is that two days a week? Again, different between different job roles and different functions. So pulling all this data about these different work styles, pulling it together with your your uh, your policy on, on working uh, and remote working policies helps you guide uh, these different types of devices for those personal use cases. And then we can also use that same, stati uh, same data and statistics to help with your planning of those uh, office moves uh, or return to office uh, as we drive this uh, new uh, smarter working agenda. Uh, and as you would expect, um, as we, I say, we've done it over the last 10 years, this, uh, this um, uh, work style persona research. Uh, and we've, our recent is from last year, our recent research is from last year. And as you would expect, um, you can see uh, remote work has gone up uh, and being in office time has, 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 been, um, uh, has been reduced. Uh, we'll see that balancing out as we uh, get our next uh, set of data, uh, which is coming um, uh, mid, mid this year. But you can see it's a, it's a continually evolving, uh, changing feast. And I guess that has its own difficulty in what's right now might not be right tomorrow, but at least you've got some data points um, to help you uh, once you've got this information to help with your planning uh, for that uh, smarter working capability. So we can certainly help uh, with this data, this information, um, as you're planning that return to work, uh, as you're coming up with your um, uh, your, your policies on, on what is right uh, for the different job roles and different functions uh, and giving them that connectivity uh, no matter where they're working from. Uh, and as I say, <clears throat> once we... Um, once we plan uh, people and uh, plan for people and, and that return to office, it's what we do with those meeting spaces. And uh, and I spoke to a couple of uh, um, uh, public sector sales guys from Apollo who you can reach out to uh, after the session in our in our booth. Uh, but they talk about you know uh, the different types of rooms that there are in in, in the lots of public sector organisations and uh, and areas. You know. Uh, one of them said a, a very technical room in a, in, a, in a public sector environment is a desk with two chairs. Um, and again, is that the right technology? Do we need to look at adding um, a video capability or at least audio capability into those spaces? Uh, and again, it's understanding 
um, you, what your users' requirements are going to be when they do come into that office, what do they need to do? Um, so this data can be used to help with planning those rooms in terms of the, the right mix for those rooms. Again, depending on the, the environment, depending on that use case, how much time they'll spend in the office and what they need to do if they are coming into the office. You know, if you want to do some sort of focus work and you've got your, you have that flexible working capability, you really do that focus work when you're at home where you can really focus rather than coming into the office to do that focus. The idea that you would be in the office was that you want to meet people, you want to communicate, you want to collaborate. So having a having a hot desking environment as an example and setting up spaces for that, um, but having more me larger meeting spaces where you might want to carry out some of those um, team building activities or, or, or joint collaboration uh, activities. So it helps taking that data is not just for helping guiding what's right from a personal device perspective, such as headsets or video cameras, but also in those rooms. What do you need in those rooms uh, and what do you need to connect to in those rooms, I think, which is, which is a, a bit of a challenge as well. So we've got sort of lots of data points. Uh, and again, here we are about what are those different types of job roles and, and, and functions that you need when you come into the office. Is it focus work? Is it connecting? Is it a, a broader type of presentation that I'm doing like this today? Or is it a learning environment or an experience? It's understanding what is happening uh, in your meeting spaces. And obviously, uh, you're, you're a lot closer to that than I am. But at least it gives you some idea and some data points to help with those planning of those uh, different types of rooms that are required um, once you're, uh, you've, you've planned that. So this then um, leads to um, what types of solutions that we can have from a personal space. So is it um, is it wired headsets? Is it wireless headsets? Do you need a bit more flexibility with Bluetooth? Do you need some more secure types of headsets, uh, depending on which environment you're in? Do you need some sort of wireless decked capability? Do you need a desk phone? Obviously, we mentioned that uh, office communicators like to communicate via, via phone. So what types of phones do you need? Do you need to add a, an additional camera? to complement the, uh, the laptop or if it's a PC that you've, you've got in your environment, you need to connect a, a, a camera to that. So you can have that video experience using a, a, um, a, a desktop PC. Um, or, uh, and those are the different types of devices across the range. And I'm not going to too much detail here, but certainly uh, the guys can work with you uh, on that. And then as we go into your room systems, um, you know, in the spaces that you need to video enable, if, you know, video is now pervasive and you're trying to get that, uh, that internal communication and also external communication that uh, a lot of you are striving for, you know, and you're connecting to these cloud-based solutions, that does have some uh, um, complexity in itself. Uh, so we have solutions for different types of uh, environment to help and work with you, whether that is a dedicated always on device that is a dedicated Zoom room or a dedicated Microsoft Teams room or a dedicated Ring Central room, or is it something where you need that bring your own device capability because you've got multiple environments, you've got a space that you need to a video enable with some equipment that's used by different um, parts of the, the, the gov local, local government, whether that is education, whether that's healthcare, whether that is, you know, whatever section it needs to be, all on different tenants. How can you simply uh, invest in some technology which is going to improve the video and audio experience, uh, but also give you that connectivity option um, uh, without too much complexity? So again, depending on where you are and what your focus is, we have these solutions available um, uh, and we build in a lot of technology to improve that video and audio experience across our systems. Uh, and in fact, we do that across everything that we do. So we have some buzzwords here from an audio noise cancelling perspective. So things like acoustic fence and our room systems that are basically using microphone arrays to cancel out noise we take that technology and put it in our headsets as well so that you have a microphone at the front that's listening to my voice you have microphones in the ear cups that are listening to all the the, the, the ambient sounds behind and there's a little digital signal processor in here that will subtract my dulcet tones from any of that other noise so that all you hear is my voice and uh, it gives me the ability to uh, to talk quietly even in a noisy environment so i don't have to raise my voice so we, we we try and keep that consistent. We have noise block AI again in all our systems, in our phones as well, as well as our room systems. And then we use the technology in our beams, uh, beam forming microphone arrays, both in our room systems, but also in some of our, our wireless headsets as well. So making sure clear, clear, crisp audio, no matter where you're working from, is key to make that uh, smart, smarter working agenda work. Uh, and then from a video perspective, in our room systems, you know, we want to make it as simple as possible for users that they join a meeting. 
either bring your own device, plug it in and start your meeting, or you have a console in the room and you click join because you've already scheduled that meeting. And then you take the technology that takes care of the audio on one side, the acoustic fence and noise block will block out all those extraneous noises. And then from a camera tracking perspective, you want to make sure that it's a very immersive experience so that the camera will track and frame. Um, and there's different types of settings. I won't bore you with the details, but however you want to conduct your meeting, whether you are presenting, you know, you can put it on presenter mode and walk around, or if you are presenting to a remote room or a remote classroom, put it on group framing so you can see the people or people framing as we call it that picks out the faces so uh, and that's uh, configurable from the device itself so we'll we we'll try and make it as idiot proof as possible or can be centrally managed and you can set that policy up and, and lock it down if that's what you need to do to keep it as simple for, as possible for users but we build in all this technology into everything that we do uh, and we do some of that capability in our personal devices as well if we need to um, so that you get that crisp clear video and audio experience so no matter where you're working from, home, office on the road, the different types of work styles, if it's a third space that you need or a main office or a hub office uh, where you need to connect, um, we have those uh, those experiences. So it's a, a personalized approach, fits the unique styles, uh, needs and uh, needs of each of the work styles. It's consistent across things, but it gives you the flexibility to flex and change as, as uh, the new modern work, smarter working changes as well. Because I don't think anybody has decided what is truly 100% right. There will be some changes. So giving that flexibility to be able to change. So this is our plethora of solutions uh, from a headset perspective. I'm not going to go into these in huge amounts of details, but if you want Bluetooth wireless, we have them in the different wearing styles. They can connect to a soft client, a mobile phone, and a desk phone. Um, same experience with your black wires. If you need a wired device that's always on, simple to use, plug it in and it goes. No, no battery anxiety with those devices, although you get really good battery life in your Voyager headsets these days. You know, we're, we'll keep it as simple as possible for users with nice, simple touch control to, on, on a little control device that's in there. And again, connecting to whatever you need to connect to, soft client, mobile phone or desk phone. And for those that don't want a headset, we have our speakerphone devices that uh, can be used uh, in a personal space or in a small meeting space. Uh, uh, and then, as I mentioned, we have our decked variety of headsets that are a bit more secure using a dedicated um, uh, wireless frequency rather than the Bluetooth, uh, where you can get a bit of um, uh, interference with a lot of Bluetooth devices if you're in a very um, uh, crowded office space. So again, understanding how you want to work, we have got those devices across our portfolio, um, uh, but also you know what can can be used in a home environment as well. Uh, and then if you've got any call center environments, we have our traditional Encore Pro wired devices with uh, quick disconnects uh, uh, that can connect to um, uh, multiple devices, uh, but I've got that uh, lightweight, uh, uh, secure, crisp, clear audio that you would expect for that contact center environment. So any call, call centers that you may have in your uh, organization as well. So we're, we're covering that from a, from a personal uh, audio perspective. But I think the challenge is, is what about, you know, post-COVID challenges for you guys in that return to the office? You know, do you need to get people back into offices to support the local communities? You know, if you've got a big office to get the footfall for the local coffee shop, how can you encourage people back into that office? Um, what is available in those meeting rooms today, if, if anything at all? I know I mentioned before about the table and the, uh, and the, and the desk. Um, are there screens? Is there some legacy product in there that you might need to swap out? Um, how do you join that meeting? You know, the, that complexity of Zoom versus Teams versus, you know, is it is it going to be easy to use once you get into there? Because I know traditional video conferencing, you know, from a polycom perspective, we try to simplify it as much as possible but remote controls were always uh, a bit of a no-no but having a nice console uh, with a nice join button on there uh, is, is good but you have to be on the right domain which has its own challenges so simplicity of starting that meeting and reducing what we call the, the meeting tax which is usually about five to ten minutes walking into a meeting room before the meeting starts how can you improve that experience <clears throat> and what do you need to do from an audio and video perspective you know traditional pan tilt zoom cameras without any automation were a bit challenging and they were you know picking up a remote control or trying to control the device from the controller was always a bit of a challenge so we'd try and get away from that wherever possible and then how do you share content um you know it, do you want to go wireless do you want to go plug in an hdmi cable um all these sorts of challenges that we see 
uh, and then seeing participants. I can't see everybody. It's you know the camera that you're in that room is not pointing at the, uh, the the table, or it's zoomed out, or it's zoomed in on a specific seat because the the person who used it last was quite uh, uh, video savvy and they could control the controller, but they left it zoomed in a specific area of the room which is probably not best. So again, some of those types of challenges. And then the, the traditional mute versus uh, noise. You're on mute, you're not on mute, all that type of thing. How can you improve that and simplify that uh, experience as much as possible? And then, uh, and obviously, your utilization of, of property estate, as I, I mentioned earlier about getting back people back into the office. Are you looking at reducing that office uh, footprint? Are you looking at shared spaces? You know, whether that is um, an NHS, local council, or an education, if you can save money uh, by doing that, how can you make sure that you can equip those with the right equipment for that modern working? How can you simplify that experience so that people are getting a simple, good video experience excellent audio experience um, but they can join from from they can join their meetings whether that be zoom whether that be teams whether whatever um, a domain they are on are there going to be challenges there so there's a number of solutions a number of approaches that we can to work with you on and take you on um, to assist based on your specific requirements and needs that can take you on the journey. We can we can start with what we call a bring your own device experience where we can put in a camera with uh, putting a device with a all that camera tracking and that noise cancelling capability. Uh, but basically that needs to connect to something such as a laptop. Always good if it's an HP laptop, but we're not proud from a from a legacy poly perspective. Whatever laptop it is, you connect by USB and HDMI, uh, and then use your soft client, uh, whatever that happens to be Microsoft Teams, Zoom, Ring Central, on whatever domain that you need to connect to. So uh, that is one approach. Or you know, you could deploy some devices that are dedicated for, let's say, a lo specific local council. Um, and for local council users that come into that, they will use their own tenant and can schedule meetings and click join and, and do all that good stuff. Um, but then if an education establishment wants to use it, they can bring in their own device and, and plug in their laptop and have a bring your own device experience. So there are a number of ways we can, we can, we can support you here so that you're using, making the most of your hub uh, and the real estate that you have um, uh, that you want to equip with the right equipment. Uh, and again, it's understanding what to do with those meeting rooms. You know, are they configured for one tenant, one tenant, one email for booking resource? Um, what different types of platforms? I think we've mentioned that before. Uh, but making sure whatever platform it is you're on, um, we have that excellent meeting quality. So um, under invested and, and outdated meeting rooms and poor acoustics, you know, there are always challenges for meetings. So how can we assist you with some of our newer devices that, you know, in terms of the you know, as I said, Poly, I'm a, I'm a legacy Polycomma, uh, and we used to have some great technology at a price. Um, but I tell you what we've done now, we've taken all that technology, and all that intellectual property that we developed over the years, and we've put it in our video bars that, uh, you know, sub sub thousand uh, or sub 800 pounds these days for a, for a video bar that has camera tracking capability, that has that noise cancelling capability. So for those smaller spaces, we've got some really, really cost effective devices that can cover your needs, but provide that high quality video and audio experience that uh, you're after and connect to these different environments to solve a lot of your problems that you've got there. Um, and again, I know you've got some traditional rooms and, and some spaces that you can't change. Um, obviously, we'll work with you. There are some solutions that you can you can take. Uh, trolleys with monitors and studio, the USB that I mentioned before, um, through to you know equipping your modern meeting rooms. Um, technology can take you so far. You can see in our right-hand image here that uh, there are some nice uh, noise cancelling features in the ceilings to dampen that audio. Um, uh, so, again, working with you to make sure that uh, we can uh, video enable those devices. The technology will take you so far in terms of that noise cancellation, some of the echo that you get off um, wooden walls and glass. Um, uh, but we can certainly support you making sure that um, uh, we, you can have that optimum experience in your meeting spaces. So what we're, our call to action really is uh, post this event is um, to have those discussions about what you need. Is it that hub environment? Is it a dedicated in-room device with a controller that you need? Um, 
how do you want to approach this? So what we're calling out here, we've got our Poly Experience Center at the Gherkin on the 32nd floor, uh, a modern working environment uh, that uh, you know we, we can showcase to you to give you some ideas on how you may want to approach this. What is your your standardization? And obviously the guys in the um, in the booth are, are here to talk to you initially, uh, and then we can set up this event as well. I think it's the 15th of uh, March that we have penciled in, so uh, uh, the guys will confirm that in a session. Um, but it's just to give you some ideas and some indications on what can be done um, and some of the options that are available, whether that is that bring your own device, whether that is you want a fully fledged Microsoft Teams room or a Zoom room and leverage some of the guest join capabilities that's now built into these devices. Um, or is it a bring your own device experience or, or a mixture of the two or a combo, giving you that flexibility as things uh, flex and change. Um, so that's hopefully given you a flavor of what we can do in terms of our different types of spaces, whether that's a focused small room, that's a flexible space where, oh, where you want some hot desking, uh, whether that is large rooms, um, medium rooms or huddle spaces, uh, just to give some ideas on how we can equip these to uh, give you the, the optimum audio experience and video experience um, uh, across um, your new uh, estate and offices uh, as you're driving that smarter working agenda to ensure that you um, uh, you, you can support your workers in how they want to work, um, whether that's working uh, from from the, the home office uh, and then they're, uh, you know, initially they're coming into the, uh, the, the office and doing some hotel cubing, uh, some hot desking. They might want to go into a focus room. They then might want to have a wider meeting and do a collaboration session in a meeting room. Uh, and then once they go home, uh, they, they may have some uh, briefings later on. Uh, and then obviously they, they end their day. Uh, back in their home office if that's what you required. So equipping them with the right devices, headsets, personal phones for both in use at homework, but also in the office, as you can see, uh, and then adding devices to each of those spaces, uh, either in the bring your own device experience or in with those dedicated room systems on those dedicated platforms. Uh, so that ends the uh, formal presentation. Thank you very much for attending. I hope you found it useful. Uh, please do visit the guys in the booth um, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in our, our PEC um, uh, uh, later in March. But thank you very much.